Okay. So this, this is about uh, my little adventures with uh, getting a projector screen uh, for my uh, show. Um, so I hope to give some information that will find, help some of you with uh, what I've learned from this. And I'm sure some of you will know quite a bit, but this is for uh, primarily for people that haven't done it before. And But if you ha do have projectors in your show, this might give you some new ideas. And just uh, keep in mind, I'm going to turn my video feed off, okay, just to keep things rolling smoothly, my internet connection. So, um, but this is, this type of projection decorating is uh, is not the kind that you put outside projectors that project uh, pixels onto your house. You know, like those big fancy displays that chartreuses and all those. Uh, this is more for a projector that's indoors, and uh, you know, shining onto a window or a glass door. You know, that kind of thing. So that's sort of the focus of this. Um, the other kind of projection decorating that's called projection mapping. And a uh, whole other topic, you know, which I haven't done yet, but would like to one day. So what we're going to talk about today is, uh, you know, you know, have an overview of what it is, um, how to choose a projector that's going to uh, suit your purpose well and uh, not break the bank, uh, how to choose the proper material for a screen that will have a good contrast in color. Uh, projection placement is really important uh, within your house. So we're going to talk about some, some tips for that. And uh, also uh, where you can get videos uh, to play on your on your windows, um, you know, either videos that you make, videos that you buy, uh, things like that. And, and if you, uh, in, in my particular arrangement, I had to edit some videos to make it fit my window nicely. And I'll talk more about that too. And uh, then, I'll, then we're gonna talk about how to get uh, these videos to play within Falcon Player. Um, and also what, what's also uh, important is how you can control your projector from Falcon Player. So how you can turn it automatically off and on each evening um, and play your show and then shut down every night so you're not just uh, running that projector 24 hours a day. Uh, we're gonna uh, show you some tips on how to automate that kind of stuff. So Falcon Player can play MP4 videos, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, you can also do uh, virtual pixels uh, with your projector. So you can actually make your window show uh, fake pixels as uh, as the projector puts them out on your on your display, so it's like having a matrix for free as a, as an added benefit. So that's a wonderful wonderful feature. So that's all of our topics. Um, if you have any questions, uh, save them uh, to the end of the uh, discussion. We'll have a, a round for questions and answers, and I'll try to look at chat messages. But it might be better just to just to um, you know wait until we get to the end before I can uh, uh, answer some questions. So. A little bit about me. I've been doing uh, computer lights for about seven years. Uh, started out with uh, GE Color Effects, bought from Lowe's, uh, found a way with the help of a friend to hack them with Arduino and uh, you know ran them off of a custom animation language until we got into X lights. So and now I'm you know thankfully a lot more advanced than that. So but I've started with Arduino. Um, run pixels off of Raspberry Pis, Falcon controllers, and uh, BeagleBone Black for some heavy lifting too. So um, one thing that I like about, uh, that makes me real proud of my show is I, I tried to find a way to make my show available uh, from anywhere in the world. So I live in the country, I don't get a whole lot of car traffic, so it's nice when other people can watch them and hear them and control what shows on them. So uh, that, that's one of my uh, fun things I like to focus on. Um, I also help run the uh, the local Maker Fair in my area. That's one of my other hobbies. Uh, pretty cool if you haven't heard of Maker Fair before. Uh, they're all over the world. Uh, MakerFair.com with an E. And I have two dogs that put me for a serious walk every couple of days. <laughs> so that's some of my other stuff. So, uh, and a lot of you know what what project projection decorating is. Uh, no no news, but it's always fascinated me when I've seen it uh, in people's homes. Uh, they typically buy a projector, they uh, get a DVD player hooked up to it, and then play these videos in Windows. Very fascinating with kids. They just find that totally awesome. So I've wanted to do something like that, too. And uh, if you are interested in, in doing a projector that is outside, um, there was a, a session earlier today on using a projector in your display, which I think talks about outside projectors and how to protect them from the elements and things. So if you missed that session, uh, I think the, uh, the coordinators here will have a YouTube of that in about a week or so. They're going to record all these sessions and let them uh, watch be watchable later on. 
And, uh, and again, we're going to talk about uh, how you can use a projector to uh, uh, be part of your show for uh, sequences and things. So uh, what can projectors be used for? Uh, some obvious stuff here. You can put still images on, on your uh, uh, windows. Uh, you can put videos you know, on your windows. And what's kind of nice is, is uh, you can have your projector through Falcon Player uh, directly play an MP4 uh, onto your, your window. But that works independently of your sequence. So, so if you had videos you wanted to play between sequences, uh, Falcon Player directly supports that with playing MP4s as, as one of your uh, um, playlist uh, actions or events. Um, but what you can also do is if you want to put video as part of your sequence, uh, X Lights has a one of their effects is for embedding a video, and uh, so you can actually import your MP4 into X Lights. Uh, as part of your sequence. And when you go to uh, render your sequence and save it as an FSEQ, that video gets embedded into the FSEQ uh, so you don't have to mess up the MP4 again. And the benefit is you can just upload that sequence into Falcon Player and then the video is part of your sequence. So very flexible on, on how you want to do that kind of stuff. So I, I'll, I'll use a projector with a sequence, um, you know, to play the sequence and then uh, between sequences, I might play videos like a Santa in the window that I purchased from somewhere. That's just an MP4, you know, so I can do it either way if I want to. So what do you need to make this kind of stuff work? You need a projector um, and specifically a projector with a serial port. And that helps with the uh, automation part of things. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. It should be a special kind of serial port. And uh, USB is not the correct kind of port. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit, too. You'll need a serial cable uh, for connecting between your Falcon, your Raspberry Pi running Falcon player. You can also control your projector from a Windows computer if you want to do it that way, or an Apple computer. Um, so if you don't want the Raspberry Pi to do the automatic turn off and on every night, you can uh, do that some other way. You know, it depends on how you want to do your wiring. Um, you need to buy a USB to serial adapter. So it's just a USB device you plug into your uh, Falcon player that will uh, let you connect your projector through a nine pin serial cable. Uh, super cheap, uh, Falcon player supports those natively. So easy to set up uh, your Raspberry Pi to run Falcon player, got to have your videos. And then the room, we'll talk about this more later too, but you have to have a room, not only with a window, but the room has to be arranged in such a way where the projector can uh, uh, be far enough away to display the image properly without obstructing your normal use in that room. And then the projection screen uh, that will go um, over the window is also important to, to choose. So uh, picking a projector. Now I've seen in, in some displays when I go um, you know, watching displays every year, uh, people more and more are using televisions instead of a projector in their windows. And that's kind of a cool idea because projectors are getting, or TVs are getting pretty affordable now, big screen ones, uh, really cheap. And uh, so that's, that's worth considering over a projector. And one reason is, um, you, you know, it, has, it takes a lot less space to, uh, to place it in your window. You don't need to occupy the whole room for that projector or part of the room. Um, so if you're doing a living room type of a thing, you know, your family can still do their stuff in the living room with, with the TV in the window and, and not be interrupted that much. Uh, TVs have better contrast, I would think, than a projector would. I mean, the high-end projectors have good contrast, but I think TVs by nature are better. Um, the only thing that you lose with a TV setup is it blocks your window throughout the season. So if you're doing it in a, in a family type of room, uh, you've lost uh, viewability of that room from inside. Uh, you can't enjoy the window anymore. So that's one thing that projectors have over TVs is that the window can still be used uh, for, for regular use. Um, if you are interested in uh, putting a TV in your window, uh, there is a session coming up tomorrow called Integrating TVs into Your Display. That's probably what that's going to talk about. So worth uh, watching. So picking projector. Um, uh, lumens is important. Lumens is the uh, brightness of the projector, uh, how bright an image it can, it can put on your, uh, on your window. Uh, but you don't need a very bright uh, projector to do this because it's going to sit fairly close to the window anyway. Um, so uh, picking a projector with 1,700 to 2,000 lumens is more than enough to make a nice bright image. And But you have to be careful. When you're, when you're looking at projectors, uh, some of the cheaper brands will kind of lie about the lumens they support. Uh, so you have to read, read the fine lines and try to see 
um, you know, what the, what the actual native lumens are. Now, if you're doing an outdoor projector, trying to project, you know, light onto your house, uh, you need a much stronger projector for like that type of thing. But for inside, uh, up, to, you know, I'd get a 2000 lumen projector and call it done because uh, it works well. The other thing is, is uh, the resolution of the projector is not important. Uh, high resolution. Um, you don't need that because uh, people are going to be, you know, along your roadside looking at your house that could be, you know, 40 to 90 feet away. So they're not going to see um, those those finer pixels. If you get like an HD projector that's 1080p or 4K, um, they're not going to notice that difference. And and if you get a projector like that, and especially if you're encoding um, FSEQ files for high resolution videos or saving high resolution MP4s, you're wasting a lot of processing time, especially if you have a lot a large show. So it, it'll hurt you in many ways if you're trying to deal with high res videos uh, when, it, when they just won't see that from the road. So believe it or not, 800 by 600 resolution is uh, more than adequate for, you know, my house is probably 70 feet from the road. Your house may be a little closer, you know, but believe it or not, that's a nice resolution. Um, that's, it's not quite as sharp as DVD, uh, but then again, you're not standing nine feet away from your television <laughs> or from your projector to watch it. You won't notice it. Now, in my specific situation, I have a nice uh, uh, living room window that's broken up into two windows with a little divider in the middle. Uh, so it's two separate windows with a, a, set, with a middle uh, beam kind of thing. So if, if my diagonal dimension is 110 inches between those two windows. So I have one projector that, that will display one image that, that spans both those windows. And I'll show you some, or talk about some tricks that I use to make that kind of a cool benefit. But even for a setup like that, um, I, I bought a projector that supports WXGA, which is widescreen. And 1280 by 800 is uh, uh, perfect for that type of dimension. So, so get a widescreen projector that supports that type of ratio and you'll be good to go. And in the same vein here, uh, cheap projectors will lie about the resolution, but that doesn't really matter so much because you're not going to use the high resolution anyway. Okay, so another thing that's important when you're picking out a projector is its uh, throw distance. And that means how far the projector has to be away from your window to display an image that's big enough to fit your window. Uh, normal Projectors might have to be, you know, five feet, eight feet away from the window, which if you have a room that's set up that way, like you're using a, a, a spare bedroom, it's not being used by anyone, and you can move that projector to the rear of the room, um, then you're fine. Uh, or if you hang it from the ceiling, you know, for a distance. But more of the times than not, a regular throw projector will give you grief trying to find a spot for it, because if you put that projector too close to the window, the image will be too small. So when you're picking a projector, try to pick one that's called a short throw projector. And that means you can stick it pretty close to the window and it'll be a nice big image. Uh, so there, you know, you can get it in the room a whole lot easier. And if you go to uh, projectorcentral.com, they will uh, list a lot of the, the, the modern and past projectors and let you know what their throw distances are. So it helps you, uh, you know, right down to the feet, how far it has to be placed to get a certain sized image. So that will help you with uh, picking one out. When you're choosing brands of projectors, the ones listed on the slide here, uh, Sony Optima, ViewSonic, Hitachi Boxlight, uh, those have been uh, commonly accepted as high quality projectors that should be reliable. Um, you'll find a lot of projectors on eBay, uh, Amazon that aren't these names. And you know, if you're looking for a burner projector that might last you a year or two, those off brands might be fine. But if you're looking to do this for kind of the long haul, uh, try to stick with the the, uh, the nicer brands. And for some reason, I didn't put BENQ, BenQ in that list, and that should be in the list also. It's another good one. Um, okay, so should you buy a new projector or a used projector? Um, you know, again, this is going to go inside your house. It doesn't have to be super bright. Um, they're not going to be that much money. Um, you'll probably spend five hundred to fifteen hundred bucks for a, for a nice new one. Um, you know, but if you're just starting out with projectors and, and you think you're going to like them, but you're not absolutely sure, uh, get a used one. Um, eBay, uh, uh, there are schools that will sell their, their um, used projectors on eBay. And these are beefy projectors that they'll sell for cheap, you know. And some of these have, uh, you know, are reliable professional brands that you can get for a fraction of the cost. 
uh, of a new one. So that's something to consider. If mine is not an option, you know, by by all means, get a new projector. Um, but if you want to keep your show cost uh, reasonable, just get just get a used one. The biggest thing to to worry about is the brand, and also the uh, the re remaining lamp life on the bulb that you're receiving with that projector. So so if the if the uh, if the sale item says you know that it, it's been the projector has been used for five years and it shows so many working hours on the, the bulb life. You know, you may want to uh, consider a different one. Uh, the reason is, is if you're going used, you don't want to have to buy another bulb because bulbs can be way more expensive than the cost of that used projector. So just get a pro used projector with with a uh, lamp life that's fairly new, fairly low, and you can find that projector might last you a good five or eight years since you're only using it, um, you know, one month out of the year or less. Um, so that, that's, and you know, you have to take the, the bulb life on the uh, eBay listings with a grain of salt because they're just like car odometers. You know, people can lie about that kind of stuff and reset the projector and lie about the remaining hours of the bulb life. So, you know, you just sort of have to see how trusted the seller is. And I've listed one seller that I've worked with has been really good to me and, and is, is trustworthy. So just to help out. One thing when you're pricking out any kind of projector, is try to get one with a with a high real uh, native contrast ratio. Uh, that that will help you with how black your blacks are uh, when you're looking from outside. Because uh, two of the things, if you have a projector that that doesn't have a good contrast ratio, you're going to have kind of grayish backgrounds to your images and videos, and it just doesn't look professional. And what what can help fix that is a high ratio projector and a high quality screen. So, and this is another thing that can be misrepresented online. Uh, you might have a projector that they say it has 3 million to one contrast ratio. Uh, that, that could be an effective contrast ratio and not the native ratio. You're looking for the native ratio. So try to get that out of them if it's not listed on the, the ad because you can really get misled with that kind of thing. Okay, so other features to look with uh, when you're buying your projector. Uh, your Raspberry Pi that you'll be playing your videos from uh, through Falcon Player, that has an HDMI out port. That's your video port. So you have to get a projector that's compatible with that. So obviously a projector with an HDMI port would work. Uh, a DMI, a DVI projector, you know, if it has one of those ports, that'll work too because you can buy just a cheap little ad adapter that will make that you know, adapt from the Raspberry Pi's HDMI to the projector's DVI. If your projector only supports DisplayPort, uh, or if you have an older projector and it only supports VGA, um, you can still use them with the uh, Falcon Player and Raspberry Pi, but you have to buy a converter. And this is not a simple cheap adapter. This is like a little circuit board embedded into a cable. So, so a DisplayPort projector and a VGA projector, it's possible you can convert HDMI to those, those other formats, but you have to buy a slightly more expensive uh, converter cable to make those work. So not, not a big deal, not the end of the world, um, but just keep that in mind. Now, the one thing about running your show with a projector in it is you don't want that projector running 24 hours a day, and you want the convenience of having it turn on uh, when the show is starting when you do need it. So you can manually turn on the projector yourself. That's what you know a number of people do. But the issue is, is at night, um, you know, you can turn it off yourself. But it'd be far easier. And and Falcon Player has it built in to automate turning your projector off and on. What you don't want to do is uh, simply use like a timer for your power outlet and just turn it off at you know nine o'clock at night just by cutting power off to the projector because uh, the, the bulb is hot on that thing. And if it doesn't get time to cool down properly, uh, it'll, it'll damage the bulb and then your projector is out of, out of commission. So, so normally when you turn a projector off through its uh, panel, through its power button on the panel, um, you'll notice that the projector sets it's powering off, but it might wait a few minutes while the fan is running to cool it down before it physically turns itself off. There's a way to automate that through a Falcon player. So again, you need a projector that has a serial port built in to make that happen. That's also called an RS-232 port. It's kind of an old school way to control things. So that's the, what I consider the recommended way to turn to automate this. Um, if your projector uh, does not have a serial port, but it, but it does have an Ethernet uh, slash RJ45 port on it, 
that is possible. Um, uh, Falcon Player has provisions. What, what that projector means is you can connect it to your home network, and then Falcon Player can send commands to your home network to find it and then turn it off and on. Uh, that, that feature is called PJ Link in Falcon Player. Uh, that's a sort of an industry standard for controlling devices over the uh, network. Uh, I haven't done it that way. I think it's possible because um, it's, it's a listed option on a, one of the Falcon Player plugins, but I haven't done that. What you don't want to do is if your projector only has a USB port on it, if, if there's no serial port, no Ethernet, but it does have USB, that is typically not used for controlling a projector. Uh, typically, that's used for providing pictures and things to projectors to show if you, know, if you take it off site somewhere. It's for use for different purposes than, than controlling a projector. So that will probably do the trick for you. Okay, so we're gonna move on to another topic here, uh, picking a screen uh, for your window. Uh, pretty important. Uh, there are some, um, uh, some obvious things. There's a lot of companies selling professional uh, screens for this type of stuff. And, and they'll give you some, some good happiness with a nice image with good blacks and bright brights and all that kind of stuff. But they can be kind of pricey, so um, and that you know so um, you know there's some other options you can have to get some good effect uh, without spending a whole lot of money. Um, I think I spent four bucks on my screen, and uh, and the the results are they're okay. You know I might do better in a future year, but it got me started for at least for the hobby. So uh, so for materials for your screens, you can buy screens that look like that picture that you just buy them off of eBay or Amazon and they come with the, uh, the reinforcements along the edges and the grommets and you just uh, you know, put it on the inside of your house window inside the room. You just find a way to mount it and you're a done deal. So that's, that's the way you can go for a lot of your stuff and it's not that expensive really. Um, if you're looking for some, some high quality options and you wanna be sure of it, uh, Atmos FX uh, makes and sells projection material that's meant for for holiday displays like this for inside of a window. So there's a website there that can get you started with what they sell. So I would consider that probably the premium material if you want to be assured that it's going to be uh, high quality for what you're trying to do. There's another material called trapeze, and you can actually just buy that bulk. And it's uh, primarily uh, polyester, but it's got some spandex in it. So you can actually stretch it top to uh, get rid of wrinkles. Um, you won't really see the wrinkles from, from the roadside, you know, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but if you want to have a perfect image, uh, it's got some, some options there. Uh, but it, is, it does have really good picture quality for, uh, for these uh, projectors and particularly for, you know, rear projection. And what I mean by rear projection uh, is, what do I mean by that? I'm trying to think now. Oh, okay. Your projector, when you pick one out, uh, typically if you're broadcasting it onto a window, the projector is expecting you to watch the video sitting from within, inside the room looking at the window. That's you're just looking at like a TV image. But from the road, they need to see a reverse image of that because they're looking at the, the back of the screen. So if you make sure you pick a projector that has an option for rear projection, so you can actually pick it from its configuration menu that you can reverse that image. So you know most of the most of the higher quality brands I mentioned will have that feature. Um, if you're buying a lower uh, off-brand projector or a, a consumer level projector, make sure it supports rear projection. Uh, you can also use spandex, uh, which is a popular option for a lot of people doing projection type stuff, whether it's for holiday projecting or, or whatever. Uh, don't use two-way sp spandex. I'm not sure why I said that, but I'll have to look into that. Okay, but if you're looking to uh, just try out this hobby and, and see if you like what you're doing and just do this in steps, there's a lot of DIY materials you can use for your screen. Um, you know, I, I've read on the internet uh, a number of places that people just buy cheap plastic shower curtains for this. And uh, if you do that, that's what I tried uh, for my projection when I did the first year. And I just got a frosted uh, coating on that. It was semi-translucent white. Uh, got it at Walmart for just you know, four or five bucks or something like that. And uh, if you're concerned about wrinkles, you can actually pass it over with a hairdryer a few times. And, um, you know, and like, yeah, like Robert said, shower curtains work great. So, yeah, it, it does help. And uh, what I did is I, I got... Uh, some threaded, long threaded rods at Lowe's, uh, like 10 foot, five foot rods. 
uh, very thin, you know, they didn't have to be very strong. I, I ran the top of that curtain through the um, the little sleeve it's got at the top, um, you know, and, uh, and let it hang down from the window. I just put those rods on top of my curtain brackets at the top, but it doesn't give you a very uh, stiff screen uh, because the bottom needs to be weighted. So I actually took the bottom of my screen, I folded it over, uh, put some grommets along the bottom and then wove some string along the bottom to make a little channel for the bottom. And then I stuck some threaded rods in the bottom of it too to pull down on it to keep it taut. And that worked pretty well, uh, pretty easy to set up. So, um, so that's something to consider. Uh, plastic tablecloths can work well for this, uh, industrial plastic. Uh, plastic garbage bags. If you got some lying around, people do these kind of things, um, you know, for their screens if they're trying to uh, just get something done. And it does work surprisingly well. So you don't have to buy, you know, a hundred dollar screen uh, just to get into the hobby to to try this out. Uh, vellum material I've read worked well for this too. Um, rubber bed sheets, uh, if you've got any, preferably uh, new. So. Okay, so let's talk about uh, projectors uh, placement. Where to put them in your room. Uh, not too, not too complicated here. The best thing, best advice I have for this is you don't want to put the projector where it's it's at the same level as the window. Um, the reason is is the the brightness from the bulb will show through the screen when you're looking at it from outside. So that's called a hot spot. So you want to have the projector typically uh, above the window. Oh, gray chiffon. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, you want to have that, that projector either above the window, like you're going to hang it from the, the ceiling somehow on, a, on like a little platform, um, or you're going to sit it on a, I think what I did is I got like a little uh, uh, low table, like a cheap plastic table, and I just uh, like a foot or two tall and just sat it on that so that the projector was lower than the windowsill. And then you can, I actually anchored my projector uh, with a couple blocks of wood or something to angle it upwards towards the window. And uh, that way, the bright spot is totally missing from the road, so you can't see that. Um, if, if you do decide to angle your projector quite a bit, uh, you'll notice that the image will not be square on your window. It'll have kind of a narrow top and bottom and a wider base. Uh, that's called trapezoiding. And some projectors have way, or they either call that trapezoiding or keystoning. And there, some projectors have a, a, met, a configuration option to square it back up again. So you can actually press a button on your remote and and, and actually square up a uh, misformed image because you've had to hang it diagonally just a little bit. So um, so that's one thing you wanna think about when you're buying a projector too, if it has that feature. Um, so that, that's a good one. Uh, and again, these bigger, nicer projectors have that kind of stuff. And uh, you're gonna be projecting onto a window or a storm door, uh, garage doors more for outdoor applications. Okay, video sources. Okay, this is the fun part. Uh, you know, this is the stuff I've always wanted to do when I've seen this kind of stuff, just finding those videos that people get and uh, putting them onto my own windows. Uh, professional Santas, you know, doing kind of stuff. So these are places where you can find these videos. And um, I won't list them all because they're all right there. Um, John Hires uh, has made a number of professional Christmas and also Halloween videos, I think. And uh, he does a great job with his videos. He's had a couple generations of Santas uh, and, and from stuff on DVD to, to high res, you know, 720, 1080p videos um, that you can buy from him. And you basically just uh, buy it, download it. Um, you can have it shipped to you on a flash drive even, but uh, you can just, you know, quickly get it and uh, you're done. So, and, and these are good, you know, if you're just gonna play, have Falcon player, just play the videos directly on, the projector, but you can also embed these into your sequence, you know, just load the MP4s into um, x lights as a video effect, and then it'll convert that to pixels uh, through the virtual matrix uh, stuff. So you can embed these. Now, if you do need to edit video, you know, suppose you buy some of these videos and you need to edit them for some reason, or if you want to make your own videos with information on them, like tune to signs and, you know, uh, show open, you know, like you can have your projector before the show, announce all sorts of information about your show, you know, through virtual pixels, or you can just make an MP4 video that shows us in this information. Um, so a good video editor is called DaVinci Resolve 17. Uh, they have a pro money uh, version that costs money, and they have a free version 
that's pretty full featured. Um, it does everything I needed it to do. Uh, seems to be the cream of the crop for video editors that are free. Or you can just, if you want, get Windows Live Movie Maker. If you can find it on the internet, it's by Microsoft, but they don't really sell it or they don't really post it on their site anymore, but you can still find it millions of different places. Uh, tried and true gets the job done pretty darn quick. So that's a good one too. Uh, the reason why I chose to go with DaVinci for editing videos is because my living room window has two window panes to it with, with a divider in the middle, you know, like a little I-beam kind of thing. Uh, I wanted to not only put videos across both windows, that's just a simple video with the projector, you know, spaced far enough back to cover both windows, but I wanted individual uh, uh, videos in each window. So having a video editor, you can load up those MP4s and rehash them so that, you know, they, they, one video will be compressed or uh, cropped to show just on the right side of the MP4 video. So just one window shows it. Uh, or you can have two different videos on each one, each screen. But uh, what I did is um, the, the little wood divider between my two windows was irritating to me because it, it would cut out some of the video. If I showed a single screen video across both windows, you would lose some of that video in the media, uh, in the media me, median <laughs> because the projector, the, the wood was blocking the projection signal. So I actually went into DaVinci and loaded up that one video and chopped it so that uh, it, that divider uh, was not part of the video. It actually, I actually squished, separated the video into two halves so that you're still seeing the full video um, on both windows without any loss in the middle. And that was really clever because some of the, one of the videos or a couple of videos I had was there was a Mr. and Mr. Santa Claus, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus uh, in the same video and they were talking to each other and they were actually passing a glass of wine from one to the other. So when I had the video properly chopped off, uh, chopped up into two pieces, um, you know, uh, both windows had each one in a separate window pane and they passed the glass from window to window. And that was, it worked out really well. So you can do that kind of stuff with a video editor with not a whole lot of learning. It's not too bad. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of the uh, technical uh, stuff here uh, with getting it working in Falcon Player and uh, getting it working in Xlights. And we're not gonna get too heavy into this. Um, you know, it's just a, um, an overview kind of thing. But if you want the details on how to make this work, uh, there's a website that I have with, uh, so you just go to itwinkle.org and there's a menu called build it and a sub menu called projector control. And this will detail all the steps, you know, uh, more than just what this uh, session will talk about. So that'll help you if you get stuck or if you're more than happy to send me an email if you want. So how it works, um, Falcon Player has a plugin uh, called projector control. You can download that directly from the uh, Falcon Player um, menu. And I'll show you that real quick. Uh, you need a, a nine pin serial cable that runs between your a Raspberry Pi and projector, or you can run the cable between your regular computer and projector. And typically that's gonna have nine pins um, on, on either side. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about how to interface that properly because most new computers and Raspberry Pis don't have a serial port on them and we'll, we'll conquer that. Uh, you need MP4 video files. And then in this, this uh, in, in within Falcon Player, you can actually, in your playlist, you can put in commands to turn your projector off and on, change video inputs, play videos. You know, it's, it's all part of Falcon Player. So there's no hacking to do to make this work. So let's talk about that. So we talked about uh, connecting your video feed from your Raspberry Pi to the projector using one of those uh, methods. Um, and then uh, you need something called a USB uh, to serial adapter. And in the pictures there, that's the second one. So that, that's the one you need. That'll let you connect the USB end to the Raspberry Pi and the, the odd looking connector on the left side, that nine pin connector to the projector, okay? You need that, that serial cable, that uh, you know, null modem cable to go between that adapter and your computer. And uh, what that is, it can be called a serial cable, straight through cable, null modem cable. They all kind of look the same, but what they mean is one of those three has uh, two of the pins are reversed on either end of the cable. And your projector may work with a cable, uh, a nine pin cable that the pins go all the way through. 
um, or you may need two of those cables reversed. So if you find that your projector is not being controlled at all and you're issuing commands and it's not doing anything, you may have to get, instead of a three state through cable, a null modem cable, which has two of those pins reversed, and then your projector might start responding to commands. Okay, so the other thing you have to do is you're, we have to know how to talk to your projector. So these are called hex codes. So your projector listens for certain commands through that serial cable. So in this example, if you look at the bottom image there, you see that 43330D command. Those are hex codes. And if you send those commands to your projector from Falcon Player, it'll tell the projector to turn on. There's commands to turn it off, that kind of thing. So your manual that comes to your projector may come with those commands. Um, or if it doesn't, um, if, you go, if you go to Google and type in that search phrase right there, the brand model, the word projector, Clary Business Machines, they will often have a repository of all these control commands for different types of projectors. So that might save your bacon if you can't seem to find uh, those codes anywhere. And you also find that manufacturers will share those codes between different models. So if you can't find your exact model, um, you can um, find a compatible, find another projector of the same brand and those codes for that brand may work for yours. So this is my setup real quick. I've got a Raspberry Pi in the top corner. Uh, there's my, uh, in the middle, uh, that thing, black ink, the brown knob, uh, that's an audio splitter for uh, stuff. Uh, the far right is my USB to serial adapter for the projector. And then I've got a little FM antenna right there. So I sort of put all my gadgets on one board to make it easier to manage. Sorry that I'm going so quick. I didn't realize I'm running out of time. So how do you do this on Falcon Player? I was going to show you how to do this uh, through, um, you know, through screen share, but I think I'm running out of time. So I'm just going to talk about it if you don't mind. So when in Falcon Player, uh, if you go to the input output setup menu, uh, actually, first off, you go to the content setup plugins menu, and you can find the projector control plugin in that list and install it with just a single click. Once you have that plugin installed, you can go to you can go to its settings through the input output setup menu, and then you'll see a new menu there called projector control. And then that's how you can set this up. So once you went into that menu, you can actually pick connection type serial. Uh, this the USB port is the port on your Raspberry Pi uh, that you're controlling with, and then the projector uh, brand and model name. Most likely your uh, model will not be in there, but if you pick a, a model that's in there, a brand that's in there that's similar to your brand, it may work anyway, okay? You can get more help for picking the proper projector at that link at the bottom. Um, if your projector isn't listed there and none of the ones in that list are giving you any joy and they're not working, you can actually add your own projector directly into Falcon Player with a little bit of hacking. Um, you can put in your own projector off and on hex codes and all that and make your own projector entry. So these are the steps to do it. You, uh, you open up a terminal to get into your, your Raspberry uh, Falcon Player. You're going to edit this file called projectorcommands.inc. It's not hard to do, really. And then you can actually, there'll be a, a template where you can put in your own, if you look in the lower right, your own hex codes to turn it off and on. And especially at the bottom there, that baud rate, character bits, stop bits, and parity, that's how fast the communication goes between the Pi and your projector through the serial cable. So your projector manual will have that information in it that you have to match for your Falcon player to make sure they kind of communicate at the same speed. Once you update that template, save the file, you'll go back into Falcon Player and you'll find out that your projector will be listed there and you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, if you're not using Falcon Player and you want to be able to control your projector from a Windows computer or especially a Linux computer, uh, these are the commands to do it. It's not hard. So if you don't want your Falcon Player to control your projector, you have a Linux or Max and you want to turn it off and on automatically that way through a serial cable, these commands will do the trick. So I don't want to uh, talk about these commands, but they're here for a slide. And uh, again, that website I have, you can look these up again, but you can do this through a Mac or a, a Linux computer. Um, if you're using Windows and you want to control your projector that way, instead of through Falcon Player, you can hook a serial cable up through Windows and do the same thing. Um, you can you get your COM port through Device Manager that, you project, that your serial port is on. Uh, you create a text file that has those uh, projector, uh, op, projector off and on codes in it. Um, and then, you make a, then you type in these two commands, mode COM3 and copy slash B. 
Uh, when you enter those commands into a command line, your projector will magically turn off and on. So you can automate that, put those two lines into a batch file, uh, open up task schedule and windows to make that batch file run on a schedule and you're done. So you can do it through that way. There's lots of different options to turn your projector off and on. Okay, we're not gonna have enough time to talk about all this. I, I'm regretting, but I'm trying to go as, as well as I can. Um, how do you play a video within Falcon Player for your projector? Um, how do you turn your projector on? Play the video, shut off. You can do all that uh, through the existing stuff built in the Falcon Player. Um, all you're doing is you upload your MP4 video file uh, through content setup on, on Falcon Player and under File Manager, and then you make a playlist. So in your playlist, uh, you add an event, and, and once you have that projector plugin installed, you'll see an event uh, option there, and you'll see projector on will be one of the events you can pick from. The pause uh, listing in that playlist is to give your projector time to warm up. So you don't want to be doing anything with the projector until it's fully online. So my projector takes 30 seconds or so to warm up. And then I tell my projector to make sure it's on the right video input. So in my case, I'm using HDMI. So that I think that switches it over to HDMI for me. And then the media line there simply plays the video um, that I have chosen, that I've uploaded to Falcon Player. And this is just a demonstration, but when the video is done, it'll the, the next event, there's a command right within the, the event uh, action to turn the projector back off again. So you can have your projector on at the beginning of your show, you know, as one of the pre-show actions and make your projector off as the post show post show action and um, be totally done. Don't have to mess with your projector every night. So that, that's kind of cool. Uh, if your projector, if your video has sound, just hook up your Pi's out, audio output to a FM transmitter for roadside people with car stereos and you're, you've got sound too. Okay, we're gonna talk about this regrettably kind of quickly. How do you get virtual pixels on your, your projector uh, screen? It opens up a lot of possibilities for sequencing. Um, don't let all this information blow you away. There's, there's less here than you think. Um, all you do is you create an X lights, uh, a matrix model, um, and then, uh, and then set up a matrix under Falcon player, you know, to match that. And then whenever you're, and then start putting effects on that, uh, X lights, uh, model. So you can put text there. You can put any of X lights effects on that matrix model that you've made. And then when you save that sequence, it saves, it embeds all that into your FSEQ file. And when Falcon player plays it, uh, it actually, the projector goes into digital pixel mode and, and pretends like your projector is a big virtual matrix. So pretty slick. Um, a couple uh, things to help you with here. Uh, don't use a high resolution uh, when you're setting up your matrix and X lights. Again, you're seeing this from a road side you don't need high resolution to see um, um, the, a nice sharp image. Um, and also if you have a high resolution matrix and, and high, res high resolution set up on the Falcon player side for your projector, uh, it's gonna make your FSEQ files really huge. It's gonna slow down rendering times and it's all unnecessary. So I think I've gotten away with uh, 176 by 96. I think mine's a little higher than that. I think it's, I think it's something by 176, uh, my, so I'm not using a very high resolution. Uh, so just keep in that, that in mind when you're creating your matrix. Um, so that's that. But how do you set up, so the next slide, that's easy. You just make a matrix, um, define the X and Y, you know, how, how wide and how tall the pixels are. When you're inside Falcon Player, you have to set up your matrix there too. And uh, so this is how you do it. Under the input output uh, menu, you go to channel outputs, and pick other. And this is where you can define the virtual matrix type. And then you would define your channels that, you know, that uh, from X lights that your pixels are using for that matrix. You define your height and width pixels that you use from X lights, and then you're done. So once you've created that virtual matrix type under Falcon player and you've defined the channels it needs to occupy and the height and width, uh, X lights will start using it. So when, um, when you're in X lights, if we go back a page, if we go in X lights and you're setting up your matrix, um, you do have to set up Falcon player as a uh, device, as a controller. So X light with the IP address. So X lights needs to know where to send that matrix data. So you tell X lights the IP address of your Falcon player. So it knows to send all your matrix data straight to the Falcon player so that it can uh, project that on the projector. 
Uh, and if you need help setting up a virtual matrix in Falcon Player, this link here will give you all the information you need. Uh, again, my uh, webpage details all this too. So that, that believe it or not, <laughs> with one minute over, I think I covered it. <laughs> I just wanted to point out that link on the manual is for very old manual. I think it's like version 1.8. There is a lot more current manual and it goes into details on doing the virtual matrix with a lot more step-by-step -step instructions and a lot more current info as well. Thank you. That's good. It's good to know. Uh, probably can't do that with an Arduino sketch because Arduinos don't have the horsepower to handle that many pixels. Sorry for a matrix. Uh, yeah, an Arduino could turn a projector off and on. I haven't done it before, but I wouldn't see why not. Uh, that's just uh, learning how to uh, interface a serial cable with an Arduino. And Arduinos have serial outputs. Uh, I would say that would be pretty dirt simple to do something like that. Uh, you could probably get a real-time clock for that Arduino and write a sketch that, that sends out those hex codes on a schedule. And uh, yeah, that would be totally doable. I wouldn't see why not. Uh, that one slide I had, um, hold on. And this this will this video will be on YouTube also in about a week, so you'll have all that. There it is. So this is where I found where content's available. Those uh, four, these four, in that one website below. Uh, I can't tell you this this these video sources are probably two years old, so maybe one or those are maybe no longer around. I don't know, but this is where you find most of them. Uh, view, view on lead projectors versus traditional bulb ones. Uh, that doesn't matter. I would say that LED projectors will probably not burn out as quickly. Um, you know, so they'll probably last you longer. Uh, but if you're looking from a video quality standpoint, uh, neither the most important thing between those two kinds is the contrast, the native contrast. So that, that's where you're going to get the nice black background. Like in the video on the screen here, you have that sanded there with the black background. Um, honestly, with my shower curtain um, screen that I did to try this with, I was disappointed with how the blacks were. But I think I don't think that was the screen's fault as much as it was I bought a projector that did not have a high contrast ratio. So, so start with a projector with a very good contrast ratio and then see what it does with cheaper screens and you might be surprised how nice it is. Sorry that I rushed this so much. The time just got away from me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, any any other questions? I could I could show you the Raspberry Pi thing for a few minutes if people want to see it, or if you have more questions, I could do that too. And your recommendation for DaVinci Resolve? That's an awesome program, and it's actually a high-end program many commercial videos and movies and stuff are actually produced using that As for an example the music video dance monkey was actually created with davinci resolve yeah yeah it, it's amazing that it's a free program for hobbyists that's that's awesome uh to answer your question jory i don't have anything well tell you what to do multiple projectors in different rooms i did do that last year for a friend um we had a Raspberry Pi on each projector. So basically this idea is scalable, um, you know, with um, playing videos and turning them off and on, just put a Raspberry Pi with Falcon Player on each projector and you're good to go. Cause I think I did a four projector show for somebody last year. I think it was that many. Um, good quality videos for OBS. Uh, that video link that's on the page is good for that. And the, uh, yeah, OBS is cool because you can do videos and then you can put text on top of the videos and, you know, overlay graphics on top of the videos and merge that all into a single video. Uh, OBS is typically used for streaming, 
a live video to an online source somewhere. Uh, what you'll want to do for this scenario is take OBS and then save the output as MP4. Um, so you can upload that in the Falcon player or upload that into x -Lights. Um, You can use DaVinci to do the same, all these same effects and OBS will do it too. Some of these, some of these effects OBS will do. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's another thing is, you know, most likely a Raspberry Pi 3 or higher can probably play a 1080p video with it without much issue. I haven't tried that. But again, you don't need high res videos uh, when you're watching this stuff from, a from the road. So I would actually recommend that whatever videos you buy from somebody, uh, put them through a, uh, a, a, you can get the Vinci or these other programs and scale them down to a lower resolution and save a new MP4 out of it. And then use that for your, your playback. Uh, it's going to cut you down on, on SD card memory space. It's going to save you on x rendering time if, you, if, you, you know, if you're trying to do stuff like that, because they're just not going to see that kind of sharpness from the road. Um, so, you know, consider that too. Uh, I think the the lumens I'm using on mine is 2000. I, I, I can't remember the exact lumens I'm using. I've got a box light that used to be a skull projector, got on eBay for 50 bucks. Um, it it works. It's it's decent, but again, the contrast ratio wasn't very uh, good on it. So I sort of kicked myself for not splurging more money on a higher contrast um, uh, projector. So again, you're looking for that native contrast resolution. I don't know the exact number that's going to be good for you. The best I can do is tell you what contrast that I have, but I'll have to spend some time offline and go look up the model number and stuff and find out. I um, can't remember exactly what model I have. Um, actually, you know what? I might have that. Hold on a second. Uh, where did I see that? Under the Falcon player stuff. There you go. I have Oxide WX25NU. So that projector is good. I like it, but the contrast ratio is kind of crappy. So you'll see a little bit of a gray background on your blacks. And you know, it's okay. It's got me, got me started. But look that one up on the internet, find out what its contrast ratio is. And then you buy a, a projector that has better contrast. <laughs> so, and again, you need that serial port, if uh, that nine pin serial port, if you want this thing to, uh, control off and on every night for you automatically. And uh, the, the higher end projectors certainly have that. The consumer levels probably don't. Uh, I think the, the projectors by BENQ, BenQ, uh, almost always have them built in, uh, but just make sure that, you know, the one you're buying has that feature, unless you want to dabble with the uh, ethernet control stuff. All right, well, we're, we're right at the time, so thanks again, Tom. Excellent presentation. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that is poor contrast. Center's <laughs> <laughs> not very good. <laughs> cool. So yeah. uh, thanks again to Biscoya Studios for sponsoring the virtual Christmas Summit this year and to uh, CC 